Well, welcome back to another episode of Paint Society and my Kern Dream Garage. Now we got the epoxy floors all done in this beautiful marble finish. So today in this video, we're gonna go over the process of doing a floor just like this. We're gonna talk about the prep, what needs to be done. We're gonna talk a little bit about the product, some about the cost. And we're also gonna talk about in the end, why does this whole complete floor need to be redone? And now if you've been following this dream garage project, well, I'm standing where the fifth bedroom used to be in this house. And this was a part of the original plans of the home and it was original to the home and it did have eight inches of concrete where I'm sitting and all that got dug out and re pour which was one of the issues that we had along the way trying to find a company to re pour it and re pour it nicely. Now once we got everything re poured we were ready for the finish of the garage floor. Now there's two different types of finishes you can do when doing a garage floor that are the most popular as of now. And the most popular finish I believe to be is that flake finish that is a multicolored finish that, well, is very easy to apply. Now we're not talking about the one from Home Depot that's just gonna peel right up like a Rust-Oleum, but a little bit more professional grade where the floor needs to be sanded and it needs to be completely epoxied then flaked. Then they have the marble finish that you see right in here. And what we're gonna do is we're first gonna talk about what it takes to prep this floor, how we got it to this point, and the effects of having a marble finish. Is it really necessary? Do you need it? Or is it just fun to look at? We're gonna go over that all, but let's take a look at what needs to be done and how this garage originally looked with the raw concrete. Now, the first thing the installers did is they took a good amount of time and they used their floor sander and they used a 60 grit, they were saying, to really etch up all of that concrete. You can see at one point, this concrete was sealed and it gave it that super slick look, the kind of that oiled look. Now, if you were to paint right over this, it would peel off as soon as you pull any hot tires from your vehicle on it. So a lot of time just to really sand it down nice and slow and make sure all the surface is powdered up and dusty because what you're doing is you're creating those sand scratches and those sand scratches similar to painting a car is what is going to enable the epoxy or the primer to stick onto the surface. And instead of just sitting on top, it's getting integrated into the surface. You can see the big issue we're gonna have here is this new slab. It's so porous. Do you see the amount of dust and how open it is like a sponge compared to the rest of the finish here? And I will learn in the rest of the video why this was such a problem, but you can see just from sanding this area alone, um, the amount of dust that it creates. Now, originally they were not gonna do it, but I just mentioned to them that the slab was not flat at all compared to the rest of the concrete in the garage. And I didn't wanna see a raised rectangle um, in the garage, so I made sure it was gonna get done. And right after it was sanded down and cleaned off, I came out and the installers had already put down a black sort of primer base coat that goes ahead and seeps into the finish of the actual concrete and it provides a surface that can be buffed or sand it down smoother so that when the epoxy hits it, it shines like glass and it lays super smooth. And what you'll also notice that there's somewhat of a color on the wall that I did choose and it is a one coat color. And the reason why I hurried up and put it down is because you'll see that they painted the border and I wanted to have my color there first so I wouldn't have to go back and tape and cut in. Now granted there's a couple spots I'll need to touch up but that does help you when it comes to doing the design of your garage. Now I kind of did things in the opposite way. You should do the ceiling, the walls, and the floor last, but I need to get things back into the garage. So floor for me was more of a priority and well, just some plastic sheeting and some masking and I'll cover up the floor and the walls when I go to do the ceiling and vice versa. So let's go ahead and take a look. Once it was all blacked out in that primer base coat, well, let's talk about what they had to do. Now you'll see the difference in machine here. This is like a machine buffer, something you would see uh, buffing floors or waxing floors. Now he's telling me that there was an 80 grit that was used to just scuff the surface and knock anything down. 
over here on the slab, you're using a sander to knock down all the ridges from the bubbles. And then back over here on the rest of the surface, you can see that they just move in a very organized fashion back and forth. And this kind of just knocks the top off of any areas and it shows any areas that will need a little bit more attention than others. Granted, it will never be perfect. No slab is ever going to be perfect. You'd probably have to sit there all day with a more aggressive grit and uh, keep refining the grit if you want this completely flat. And I don't think any company or even owner would even desire something like this. Just keep in mind, it's not a car. It's not a panel of a vehicle, so it doesn't matter as much. It's a garage floor. And what we're trying to do here is just to remove any defects that would really catch your eye once the epoxy hits it. Now, keep in mind that the epoxy is a super thick product, which you'll see here in the rest of the video that it goes on thick and it doesn't move around a lot. Now, it will level off a little bit, but where you put it for the most part is where it's going to stay. So having somewhat of a relatively smooth surface is important because it's not going to find different areas to go and level off into. So you have to make sure that when you're using epoxy that you use a lot of it. You can see here they just barely went over it and cut the tops off of it. This is kind of like a guide coat that you would use for primer when painting a car. And what they're doing now is they're going to be doing the border first. And this is when I really liked how nice that color put I put down. And granted, yeah, it needs another coat on the top. But I put two coats where they did the border. And a couple areas I do need to go back and cut in. But it's going to save me a lot of time in the end. And after it was completely buffed down, well, they took their mop and they really cleaned it up with a special cleaner, a floor cleaner, in order to really make sure the surface was nice and clean. And then, well, we have our two colors that we use and they're mixing like a charcoal and a silver metallic together. And when I came out, they had already started with the pouring. And basically what they're gonna be doing is they poured down the darker color first and then they went ahead with the lighter color. And let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what needs to be done to achieve a beautiful marble finish. And as you can see here, I caught the tail end of them applying the silver metallic. They first put the charcoal down and they put that pretty much everywhere because that's the base. And the silver metallic is what's going to come in and just give it the highlights. Now, first thing they're gonna do is just brush it in and make sure it's consistent all over the entire garage floor. Now, what that's gonna do is leave a lot of brush marks that is not desirable, a lot of roller marks, as you can see. It's not a really nice pattern, but just be patient and you'll see exactly how they make the marble look. Now, the installer is wearing a special type of shoe. It's almost like a golf shoe or a cleat. Basically, the, sh the uh, installer's shoe fits into this glove of a shoe that has little spikes on it and that enables them to be able to walk over the surface without damaging. They have little points on the shoe and uh, it's pretty clever to be honest that you'll be able to walk all over a, a painted surface. So what he's doing is he's moving around the epoxy. Remember I, I mentioned to you that it's very thick and it does require some movement to get it to lay down or else it's just going to stay right where it's at. So he's mixing the two colors together at this point, but once they're mixed together, it's just gonna look like roller marks. Again, a not a desirable look, but what he'll do is he'll take propane, which you see right here, a propane torch, and that is what disperses up the pattern. And this is where the artistry comes into play because what he's actually doing here is he's going to the silver and the metallic charcoal tones and he's blending them together. I guess with some heat, what it does is it disperses the color together and it breaks up all of those, those roller marks. And it was kind of kind of fun to watch. You could see a lot of heat coming off of the floor, a little scary at times, but you can see the pattern just really start to show. Now what he did tell me is that he wanted to keep it as dust free as possible. So we went ahead and closed two of the garage doors and we kept this one open. 
and he would pick out little particles here and there or scrape them off, give them a roll, and then use the torch again. And this helped to disperse the pattern. And it's basically just a very um, large array of variations of the two colors that come together to give it that real true marble effect that looks stunning. And after all that, it came out really nice. Keep in mind that your surface will never be beautiful and 100% defect free. There will be some ripples, there might be some potholes. At the end of the day, it's a garage floor, but the effect is beautiful, it has a great gloss. Now let's talk about why this needs to get completely redone. And the reason why is because where I'm standing here, now this is not the fault of the company, they just apply the coating, but well, this slab was poured and I don't feel it was poured very well as far as the finishing. It was very porous. And I don't think this company had a whole lot of knowledge when it comes to treating a concrete slab. It is not a concrete company. So they went about their business the same way that they would always do and the finish on the other portions of the actual garage are actually beautiful except for this finish right here. And I'm gonna talk about why it's not beautiful and what's gonna get done to make it consistent. And as you can see, well, it's not as smooth as the rest of the finish. The rest of this finish is nice and smooth and here it's still ripply because this is like a sponge and as soon as any material hit it from the original base coat uh, to the epoxy well it completely soaked it up and right in here it's very 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 rough there are some parts a little bit smoother but the biggest issue, issue you'll see is there are bubbles everywhere so porous that the air pockets are creating these bubbles. You can even come up to them and pop them. Some of them are already popped. And well, this is just not acceptable. They leave a very, very large ridge in the surface. Now, all these bubbles were, were present or different bubbles were present in that black base coat. And they were all sanded down, but obviously they're still a good amount and you can kind of see over in here the ridge of where the old concrete was you can kind of see somewhat of a square but overall if you look at it you can see smooth and over here just a little bit rougher but i did contact the company and this is what they told me basically they were willing to stand by their work but also as a customer, I do understand that totally this is not their regular realm of work where a whole patch of concrete had just freshly been laid. Granted, this was a big concern of mine in the initial estimate. So we reached a good agreement where I would pay for a product, they would provide labor, and then, well, in turn, the whole thing would get redone so basically in the painting world when we paint cars they're going to do something similar to a flow coat well they'll come back out here they'll sand it down and they'll reapply the coating where they need to blend it in and apply apply a clear coat coating to the rest of the finish as well and it might even look a little bit glossier than this but if we take a look at the finish itself it is absolutely stunning but is this too nice for a garage floor did I completely limit myself now to wanting to do any sort of auto body work in here? Did I create too much of a man cave to actually get any work done? Well, in my best opinion, I probably would recommend the flake to you if you're a little bit more particular because the flake really hides a lot of the issues. If I were to do this again, most likely I would probably have done the flake just knowing that the issue right here, because the flake really does hide a lot more because of the coarseness and the texture of the flake, you just really don't see a lot. Now, when you're doing a marble finish like this, you're gonna have to be okay with areas that aren't 100% perfect. Now, when it comes to cost on a finish like this of 750 square feet with material, you'd probably be looking around 3,500 for the flake and you cut, tack on a couple extra grand, maybe around five grand if you're looking at a finish like this 
for the marble, so it's really up to you to decide what are you looking for. Now the one advantage to this floor is it's gonna be a lot easier to brush and clean out. I had the flake in the old garage and that was a little bit hard to move the bristles over the flake. A lot of stuff just got stuck into the flake. Although it was a little bit more rigid, well, it was a little bit harder to clean. The one thing I do love about the color though is it's very dark and it won't show as much dirt, which leads me to my next investment, which will be dust extraction for my sanding. Now, I do intend to make full paint videos in here and different instruction, and this is gonna be the home of Paint Society, and it will be treated like a clean laboratory, just like any other paint shop should. So that's why I'm looking into some sort of dust extraction tool, whether it be the Fest tool or Merca, I'm trying to keep my ears and eyes open and interested to see what you guys think as far as dust extraction is concerned. As for the finish and the bubbles, this will get completely sanded down and refinished in just a couple days. However, it will look very similar to what you're seeing right here. Now what's next for the Dream Garage? I will continue with the paint along all the walls. I do have to remove some of the old decor here on the walls. And we have the ceilings as well to strip and get completely done and knocked down. I also have a lighting company that will be giving some of their lights for us. We'll be running four circular lights at 60 watts and they claim to be enough. And we'll see how well that lights up the garage itself. We're also planning as of now to put a toolbox in this area as I've actually already purchased a Husky and we'll see how well it covers all of our tools and we plan to maybe in the future add another modular toolbox to this area although i like to keep this area particularly particularly open if possible now as for the epoxy floors do i recommend an epoxy floor well that's totally up to you i'm looking at this floor and i absolutely love it and i'm gonna love it even more once the whole garage is complete it's heaps and bounds better than any other garage floor I've ever had in my life. And I'm really happy with my decision. I think I'd be happy with the epoxy flake as well, but I'd always wonder what it would look like if I had the marble. And I generally do love the way it looks. So it's really your choice depending on your budget and what your style is. Now, one thing I don't recommend to you is doing any any sort of project from Home Depot and getting the epoxies from Home Depot just because those epoxies do not have what it takes to really be rock solid. And one thing you really need to do also is that whole floor needs to be completely sanded down and etched just like you would a car or you could never expect any of the paint or epoxy to stick to the surface. Well, make sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you love the floor? Would you have done it differently? And also, what is some other advice that you have for the Dream Garage? Now, what we'll be seeing in more episodes is we'll finish up the painting. We'll get the ceilings going. We're going to start over with our toolbox and get that all built, as well as bring in our compressor and start to get the lines run so our compressor, we can have our air tools and our paint sprayer as well. In future videos also, we'll have our inflatable paint booth. It will be right in this area as I stand and we'll show you how to get set up here in the Paint Society Garage. I hope you learned something from this video and I plan to see you guys on the next one. And remember, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.